So let's walk through an installation of SQL Server 2019. So I'm on my server. I've got Server Manager open. We need to download an evaluation copy of SQL Server. I've already done that download. Let me go ahead and close Server Manager here. And I've put it on my desktop. All right, so let's go ahead and double click that. And this will open up our SQL Server installation. Now, we can do a basic, a custom installation, or we can download media. So our initial download is really only like 5 megabytes, and it's not all of the material we need for SQL Server. It's a web installer. So if I want to install on a different machine that doesn't have Internet access, then I'm looking at download media. If I do either the basic or the custom install, then what's going to happen is it will download and install the information that I want, or download and ins install the configuration that I want here. But it is going to do that download during the installation process. Now, the basic just includes the database engine, which is really what we want. But I want to take you through the custom installation just because I want you to see some of the options here that we'll be able to come back to and look at a little bit later. So, we're going to set an SQL Media Download Target Location, and it's on the C drive, that's fine, so I'm just going to click Install, and it's going to start downloading. Now, I'm sitting on a relatively slow connection because I am doing this from home, and I live, you know, in an area where I don't have really great internet access. So, this is going to take a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and we're going to pick it up again once our download has completed. Okay, so we're done with the download and now we're starting to extract the setup files. This will take a few more minutes and then once we're done extracting the setup files, we'll be ready to start setting our options and actually completing our installation. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it again until we get done with the extraction. So now that we've extracted our setup files, it's loaded our SQL Server Installation Center. Now, this gives us a lot of things to work with. So we see here we've got planning, installation, maintenance, tools, resources, um, advanced options. So if you're working on planning, you ha can review hardware and software requirements, run through the system configuration checker, look at your data migration assi uh, assistant, a bunch of different tools here. We're going to jump into maintenance, or installation rather, because we want to start by installing. Now you've got several options here. We can install a new standalone or add features to an existing installation, install the reporting services, install the SQL Server management tools, install the SQL Server data tools. So several different things to work with here. Our base installation is going to start with this. Now, if we have an SQL Server cluster, then we'd start looking at the failover cluster installation. But since we don't, we're going to do a standalone installation here. It's going to be our first option. So, this is going to load our installation tool. We're going to specify the license, so we can do an evaluation, we can do developer or an express license, or if we have a product key, we can enter the product key here. So we're going to do evaluation. Developer actually gives you basically an entire license that you can run, but you can never actually use it for anything productive. It's only for development environments. So you can't actually deploy using that. Express is a very minimal install. We want evaluation because we want the full install for a limited period of time. So we're going to click Next. License Tools, we're going to go ahead and accept the license tools and click Next. So it's going to run a quick check. We're n I'm not going to use Microsoft Update to check for updates right now. If this was actually a production install, I would probably do that and just make sure that we're up to date and we have all of our security updates. But since this is a demo, I'm not going to take the time to do that. So we're going to do a quick scan here. Installing our setup files. Notice it's already completed the scan for products uh, updates and we skipped the uh, extra setup files. So this will take it a minute or so.
I'm going to go ahead and pause it, the video again while it finishes this scan for us and I'll pick it up when the scan is complete. Okay, so now it's gone through its install rules and it ran a couple of checks. And so everything that is fine with it gives me a green checkbox and anything here with a warning indicator means it may have an issue. Now an error or a failure will actually stop it from installing. But warnings will normally go ahead and install uh, even though it has the warning in place. So you can see here a couple of warnings. So we have the computer domain controller warning. If I want to see what that is, I just click on it. And it tells me you know, installing SQL Server on a domain controller is not recommended. It's actually really not. I have this system running as a domain controller. And it's because I've got a single server virtual environment here and it's just for demo in reality I would not put SQL server on a domain controller SQL uses a lot of system resources and so your best bet is honestly to put SQL on a server that that's all it does it should be a dedicated SQL server so putting it on domain controller not recommended because I've got a single server environment and I may want to make some domain accounts and be able to tie them in through um, a Windows authentication I want to go ahead and leave it that way but in real life don't do that uh, Windows firewall warning if we look at that Windows firewall is enabled make sure that the appropriate rules are open so basically saying if your clients are going to connect make sure you've created rules for them to be able to do so Okay, great. Let's go ahead and click Next. So, the next step is our feature installation. Now, we have to do the database engine. And that's prerequisite. So we've got to do the database engine. Prerequisites, you can see them here for whatever it is we're looking at. And you can see it's already set. So, the database engine is required. Everything else is kind of optional. But you'll see here we have SQL Server Replication, Machine Learning, Full Text and Semantic Extractions, Data Quality Services, Polybase Query Services, Analysis Services, Standalone Machine Learning using, using R and Python. And you can see we've got a lot of different tools here that we can add in. Now, if I don't add them in now, that's not a problem because the installation, what we've already done, actually took this little installation center and added it to our system permanently so now we can come back uh, here whenever we want and we can add new features new options into our installation using that install that install center which is now an installed program so let's go ahead and click next I'm just doing the database engine for the moment we can do the rest of it later on if we need to so next question is do we want to run a default instance or a named instance all right the default instance assumes that we're only going to have one instance of sql server now sql server will allow you to install multiple instances on the same device and that becomes really useful because then i can do something I can set up multiple databases in different instances and have different configurations and different tools available for them and that becomes really useful now if I do a default instance I only have one or I have that one as default and if I connect to the server just as the without specifying an instance name it will connect me to the default instance if I set up a named instance then I'll have to connect to the server forward slash that named instance I'm gonna go ahead and do a named instance in this case and I'm gonna do a named instance called class and then I can do additional named instances later on if I want to as well right and it will give me completely different environments so I'm gonna click next and now remember when I go to connect to this because I created the instance named class I can't connect to just the server I have to connect to the server and then forward slash the instance name in order to connect to it okay next step is going to be service accounts now in a demo environment like we're setting up here using defaults is going to be fine but in a 
large network environment or a production environment, you're probably going to want to set specific, instead of doing service accounts, you're probably going to want to set up specific accounts, and you're probably going to want to create them as MSAs or managed service accounts in Active Directory. Because you don't want, you're going to want them across the same accounts across all your serv SQL servers across your network. And you might have, you know, several of them inside your network. So by doing this uh, managed service accounts, you can use the same thing across all of them. And by making it managed service accounts, they will reset passwords on their own and that'll stay relatively secure. If you use regular domain accounts, that becomes a little more problematic. Now, the other thing I want you to see here is the SQL Server agent is set up. So these are the services. These are the account names that they're using. And you could specify your own account name and password here if you wanted to which we normally would, but I'm not going to do it right now. I also want you to show you the startup type. So the database engine is going to start automatically. The SQL Server browser is going to start automatically. But by default, the SQL Server agent does not start automatically. It starts manually. Well, that's something that's an incredibly useful tool for us. So I'm actually going to change that to automatic. And you can go in and change this later on as well. The other thing you want to be aware of here is the collation which is set to SQL Latin 1. This has to do with uh, the character sets that are used by the databases. So it depends kind of on what you're going to be running on it. In general, a default collation is probably going to be just fine. But you may run into issues if you have multiple servers uh, that are trying to share data using different collations. So that's just something to be aware of. Let's go ahead and click Next. So our database engine configuration, we can set up for Windows authentication mode or mixed mode. So Windows authentication mode means that in order to sign into the SQL server, you're going to have to have a Windows account. So sign into the Windows account, and then we give that Windows account access to SQL server. That's great. That's actually probably the best way to do it. Now, older versions of SQL Server used a separate authentication. So you had separate uh, authentications for your Windows access and then for your SQL server access. But that kind of created some headaches for users. And by keeping it mixed mo or by keeping it in Windows authentication mode, if you're using Active Directory, you get all of the Active Directory security policies that can be applied to those accounts and those passwords. So this is going to be your best bet. Now, if you have an older SQL database that did have standalone authentication that you still need, then you can use mixed mode which is where you can use SQL Server Authentication and Windows Authentication. You can use both of them. Uh, if you do that, you're going to create an SA account. So that's going to be the SQL Server Administrator or Sysadmin account. And you're going to need to set a password for that. Now, by doing Windows Authentication mode, I need to set an SQL Server Administrator. And I'm just going to add my current user as my SQL Administrator. Then we can set our data directories. Now, this is going to take some planning in a production environment. This is a standalone environment, so no planning really required, right? I only have a single drive. But if I've got multiple drives, so I've planned out a big database distribution, then I'm going to have different drives. And I'm probably going to want the user database on one physical drive or SAN, uh, the log directory probably on another one, the backup directory on another. And I'm going to want to think about where I uh, set these out at. And this would be all in your planning, right? Where you would have gone through and you would have planned this server is going to have access to these physical drives or these SANs and this is where I'm going to store the data and this is where I'm going to store the logs. And, and by separating those out to different physical devices, either local drives or SANs, I'm going to get better speed, better performance. We have a tempdb setting which normally we can go ahead and leave as default. You might want to look at the data directory because you might want that on something other than your regular SQL program drive or your uh, operating system drive. Max uh, degrees of parallelism. Normally go ahead and leave this default and you should be good. Memory specifies whether we run default memory or uh, specified memory where we can set the minimum and maximum amount of server memory that can be used. Default basically says you can use as much as you need to and you can empty out as much as you need to. 
if you come through and you set minimum and maximum, you can cap how much memory that the SQL server is allowed to use and then how much memory it will actually give back when it's done with it. Your file stream, we can enable file stream for transact SQL access. We're going to go ahead and check that and we're going to enable file stream for IO access. Okay, let's click next. Here's our summary. So at this point, we should be ready to install. So we'll click install. And then once again, while this runs, I'm going to go ahead and pause this. And then when it gets done with the install, we'll come back and we'll look and see what it's done. Okay, so our installation has finished, and you see here it shows everything has succeeded, the database engine, the SQL browser, the SQL writer, SQL client connectivity. So let's go ahead and hit close, and that closes that down. Now, this is kind of interesting. I'm going to go ahead and close the SQL installation center for the moment, and we're going to open up our start menu. And in our start menu, we're going to see SQL Server 2019. When I expand that, you're going to see we have the configuration manager, the error and usage reporting, import and export, and the installation center. So let's start by looking at the configuration manager. So I'm going to pull that up. And this will show us over here our SQL services, and this is going to be our details. So for our SQL Server services, you're going to see we have three of them running. The SQL Server Browser, the SQL Server, in parentheses, class. This is the instance ID we created. Notice that it's running and startup type is automatic. And then we've got the SQL Server Agent. Remember, we set that to automatically start instead of manual, which is default. If we left it as default, we'd want to come in here and change it. But notice that it is now up and running as well. So this right here, the SQL services, shows us that everything is running and functional. Now, just as a little aside here, occasionally when we reboot an SQL server, we have a problem where the server comes up and everything looks good, but we can't access it. And if we come in here, we'll see that sometimes the SQL server instance itself didn't start. And that's not a big deal, right? Because you can just click on it and then click start and away things go. But that's just just something to watch out for sometimes if you take an SQL server down for some reason any reason it comes back up you always want to double check here and make sure and this is not the only place you can find it under services as well but you want to check and make sure that that service is running okay at this point SQL server is up and running but notice we don't have a management studio we have come back here we have our configuration manager which is where we were just at error and usage reporting import and export data and our installation center which we can load back up and see you know where we can come back through and reinstall things but notice that we do not have a management studio we have no way to manage this other than you know remotely there is a management studio that we can use but that doesn't install by default that we have to install manually and that's going to be the subject of one of our next videos